So there was some stuff that I forgot to respond to. Actually, you know what? I'll just say it up front. The whole thing with... Um, I can't remember what the group was called, but apparently their president said he was okay with censorship or something to that effect. Um, and then he walked it back and he had to give back his salary. Uh, Clownfish TV did a response to this as well. And I agree with Neon on this. I wish they did something like that in America. Like, Kathleen Kennedy, Ryan Johnson, and all these other idiots... In Hollywood, they would not feel as emboldened to say what they say and insult their customers if they knew they would have to pay a price for it. If they weren't rewarded for it, if they were allowed to be, well, cunts, basically. I wanted to respond to that first and foremost. Sorry about the um, late response. The other thing is, there was an article that I saw yesterday, but I got sidetracked with... um, I well, won the discovery of Demon and Art getting an account there and trying to get some artists to give me permission to use their art in videos. So far, only once responded, but eh, I'll just wait some more and see what happens. But, um, yeah, anyway, there was this article about, I believe it was Conan the Barbarian. Let me pull it up again, because I took it down, because I thought maybe never mind about it. And it came. It was... Oh, here it is. Damn it, it moved. Okay, here it is. Ablaze announced his new, unrestrained, violent, and sexual Conan the Barbarian comic, The Cimmerian... The Cimmerian Beyond the Black River. Now, this came out on July 30th, so I'm a few days late on it. But I... I'm kind of new to Conan. Like, a few months back, I got the books... One of the books or one of the collection books of his stories. I still haven't read that much of it. I'm still stuck on the first story. Well, no, there was the poem, then the first story, so tend the second, but... Yeah, it seems kind of interesting. Like, I like Robert E. Howard's uh, writing. I like the way he wrote. I like reading about him. He's a very interesting guy, and... I like that his work still has some adaptations and continues to be worked on to this day. Same with Love. Actually, a lot like Lovecraft. Actually, I'm glad their work still gets some uh, new stuff contributed by people in the present, and it's not just forgotten about. But as for the whole, like I haven't read this yet, so I'm going to be reading it and then giving commentary on it. Um, but as for the title about it being unrestrained, violent, and sexual, I will believe it when I see it. To be perfectly honest, because it's kind of like when. Um, like going back to the whole that Japanese president guy saying having to give back his money and apologizing, like I think they just did that to save face. I think it's still a possibility they might be okay with censorship. Some of them over there might be okay with it. Like I can still see that being a possibility. So if they're saying they won't do it, I'll believe it when I see it, because I am too. I don't want to say cynical, but yeah, I am kind of cynical. But I am too fascinated into this reality to believe, oh, there's a chance that maybe they'll not do anything stupid. Because people in the West, they've been wanting to infiltrate Japan for a while so they can ruin manga. And it wouldn't be surprising if they've managed to get to some of the people in Japan finally. But anyway. And Ablaze is... I actually have no idea what they are. Let me check them out real quick. Because until I saw this article, I had never heard of them. Ablaze Comics. Series. Yeah. Doesn't really say much. Of hot comics, graphic novels, and more. Mm, okay. I would like to know where they're based in, because if it's in America... I'm not getting my hopes up, but anyway, here's the article, and it is, and I'll be posting a link to it in the description. Ablaze has announced that they will publish a new Conan the Barbarian comic book series which intends to present the savage adventures as unrestrained, violent, and sexual as his creator intended this fall season. And I kind of have a few problems with this, like, cover, like, Conan seemed like it was before stuff like chain mail armor and all that. Like I could be wrong on this because again I've only seen like the, the illustrations and artwork in the book and read a few pages of the first story. But I got the feeling that was before our time when like medieval types of swords were a thing. But then again, the art had swords that 
like in the book, like in his for the art for his book collection, they had swords that didn't look like they belonged in the period they were supposed to have been from. But oh well, I can kind of like suspend my disbelief a little. On October six, a blaze will release the Sumerian Beyond the Black River issue one by. I'm probably going to butcher this pronunciation. Matthew Gabella, whose social whose solicitation teases that the book will bring the character to life uncensored and in vivid full color as creator Robert E. Howard originally intended. Unrestrained, violent, and sexual. I'm um, seeing some of the art. It doesn't look too bad, actually. I might just, I might just have to get my hands on this when there's a volume of it. Because I don't buy single issues anymore. I always buy volumes. The Piss It Country... Again, I probably mispronounced it. The Pick T Country... P-I-C-T-E. You can tell me if I got the pronunciation. Well, country is an obscure jungle where the border between civilization and barbarism is thin. Only one thing symbolizes it. The Black River, which it is claimed that no white man was able to cross and come back alive. None except Conan. Um, okay. It is in the heart of this green hell that the Sumerian meets Balthus, a young, voluntary peasant whom he saves at the last minute from the clutches of a fierce Pictish warrior. No idea what that is. Moving on. Together they will try to lend a hand to the colonists who have established themselves here on the, these hostile lands in the last bastion of civilization. With a dozen men, they will have to find a powerful sorcerer, Zagar Sag, before he succeed in uniting the clans and initiating his bloody invasion. Uh, there's a decapitated corpse. Looks pretty good. In addition to launching this new series, Ablaze will also release a second edition reprint of the Sumerian's first volume hardcover, which will include the two complete stories, Queen of the Black Coast and Red Nails. Actually, I think those were in the collection I got. I, need, I should probably get my hands on them. Plus bonus material in one consolidated collection on September 29th. Sumerian Volume 1. Okay, yeah, I am definitely going to have to consider getting my hands on that. However, a reprint, a reprint is not the only hardcover, hardcover Conan release coming from a blaze this fall. As of November 24th, the publisher is also set to release the third volume hardcover of The Sumerian, which will feature the stories Iron Shadows and the Moon and the Man Eaters of Zambula. Again, I'm probably per butchering the pronunciation on this. Are you interested in checking out any of Blaze upcoming content tiles? Let us know your thoughts on social media or in the comments below. And that's it. Let me see. Um, yeah, I like what the one Connor said. This looks pretty decent. Um... So far, I'm liking what I'm hearing. Um, I do want to get my hands on that first volume thing to see if it's any good. Because I'm better at reading comics than I am at reading books. And even with books, I take I still take my time. Like, I'm a very procrastinative loth, sloth person. So it makes it hard to get things done. But, yeah, I do like what I've been seeing from Conan the Barbarian. It seems interesting. It seems very... Well, it's set... I, like, I believe there are three... Well, there's more than three characters, but three of them are the most popular, and they're all set in the same universe, and probably some of the other ones, but Conan, I think, takes place between two of his most popular ones. You have Cull, who's an exile from Atlantis, and then you have Solomon Kane, who's a Puritan sor swordsman known as the Dower Swordsman, and a bunch of other nicknames. And Conan's in the middle. He's like... I think after the Neanderthal p groups of people, but before, I guess, the Mesopotamian city-states birthing. So it's an interesting place to set the story in. I don't know how, I don't think it's very historically accurate, but back, actually no, I don't think it really matters because like, I've gotten to a point where it's like, stop thinking about it too much and just enjoy it for the most part. I mean, I do think there's a certain level of you that should be thinking, okay, this makes no sense, but not too much. But yeah, it sounds good. Like, again, I'm going to wait and see how this plays out. Like, I'm hoping there will be more news about it in the future where I can, like, so I'll remember to get it when it has a volume. Because I want a volume of this stuff. It looks good. Like, the art looks good. The actual content, like the clothing and armor they're wearing, it does not look like it should be in the Conan world. But 
Again, I'm new to Conan, so my knowledge is piss poor, basically. But yes, I think this looks interesting. Um, again, I'll be putting a link to the article in the description. Please feel free to tell me how I butcher the pronunciations if you're bored out of your mind or you want me to get it right. Um, and yeah, that's the article. Have a nice day, and remember the game was rigged from the start.